Hi everyone and welcome back to the Southerners Northern Garden and step two to creating a new flower bed in my backyard. So in my last video you saw me put down landscape fabric uh, along the Green Giant Arborvitae hedge in the back of the yard. Uh, yesterday I started putting down some cardboard. I mentioned I would be putting down cardboard and I went ahead and got that started mostly because I just needed to get that done. Sometimes you got to get those things done and out of the way. It was cool yesterday. It's a little warmer today, but let me show you where I'm at in that process. So as you can see here, I got a large portion of the bed covered with cardboard. We were lucky enough to have purchased a desk that was shipped to us and assembled in our home about a month or so ago and I asked them to leave all the huge pieces of cardboard that came with the desk uh, to protect it when it was shipped and they were willing to do that because otherwise it would have got thrown away and this is a great method to repurpose and reuse it. So yesterday I came out here and threw some of that cardboard down uh, and then I stuck a few landscape staples in it here and there. The sprinklers have run so you can see the cardboard's already deformed a little bit uh, and I intend to put mulch down on it this weekend. So just a few comments on this method of creating a flower bed. One, it takes a while for the cardboard to break down. I have actually created a bed and then within a couple weeks or immediately cut through the cardboard and planted stuff in it. This method is more preferable if you have you know, a month, a couple months to allow the cardboard some time to break down um, and that way it's easier to dig through and to plant in. One reason I use cardboard is because I have bluegrass and bluegrass is, well, let's just say it's persistent. So you can also use newspaper, wet newspaper that would also work well and I've seen people use that very successfully. If you had a non-spreading grass, I might recommend that method because it might be a whole lot easier than procuring all of this cardboard. This cardboard's been saved for several months and so I had enough to do this area over here and an area over there that I will show you on the other side of the willow bed that I am also extending to the fence. So in this process yesterday, I completely ran out of cardboard. So what I picked up at Lowe's today was a uh, contractor's paper, which you can get in the paint department. It's pretty thick, but it comes on a roll. It was about $10 for 140 feet of it, I think, and it's roughly two and a half foot wide. But the first thing I'm going to work on today is creating the lines for my new flower bed. So you can probably see right here, uh, I have my water hose laid out, and that for me has been the best method of laying out lines for your flower bed. Some people will come in and spray them with orange spray paint. I think a water hose works excellently just to provide that natural line you can see. So when you're creating flower bed lines, to give them some more interest, you kind of want to create some uh, curves here and there. Keep in mind that the curve should be gradual or else you'll just create more issues uh, cutting grass and weed eating around it. The mower won't want to go through it very easily. So the line should be pretty gradual. So the willow bed kind of circles around right here. You can actually see the end of the bed here. I'm going to be coming back a little bit, going out some and then swooping back towards the end of the um, ramp there on the back side. I will probably start on this edge today. I don't know if I'll be able to get it finished before sundown. It's currently about 7.30 and I want to get as much done as I can. Part of the issue may be whether how hard the ground is. A lot of this is also helpful if you will wet the ground in advance just because trenching that edge can be kind of difficult in my clay soil if we've had very little rain and the soil is hard. So this was watered in last night. You saw that I trimmed um, two holes in the black landscape fabric for my sprinklers to emit. So immediately after I put down the cardboard last night, I sprayed it with water from the um, sprinklers. So I'm gonna get started kind of laying out this edge. I'm using my water hose here and I'll just talk it out with you as I go along. So let's see how much you can see here. Okay, that's pretty good. I think this is the line that I wanna to use to create my bed. Um, I may get started and find that I need to move it to the left or to the right a little bit. I do because most of this area is not gonna be very usable anyway. I've kept this stretch open for the dogs to run and play. Um, and then there will be an entrance kinda in this area to the mini orchard. I've talked about moving these arborvitae towards the end of the season. Hopefully they will do okay. The arborvitae I moved back there 
it's not looking so great, but it's still alive right now. So we'll see how it fares over winter. Um, but I also want to give myself as much planting space as possible. So I'm also going to be extending the bed over here. Let's turn you around a little bit. So where the um, maple is behind this bird feeder, which will be moved by the way, hopefully in the coming weeks, um, I will be extending the bed around the maple to the shed as well, to the other edge of the ramp to the shed. So uh, the ramp is seven foot wide, and so I'm going to make sure that my grass area coming into the grass is gonna remain seven foot. So I'm gonna go grab a tape measure right quick and just kinda eyeball that and put a tape measure against the line I've drawn to make sure I've got enough room and what that bed over there may look like by the time I'm done measuring out that. So give me a minute and I'll be right back. So you probably saw me measuring out a little bit to just make sure I was gonna have enough clearance for this bed around the maple. And so the ground, I've done a couple trenches here in the ground with my um, edger, which is all I use. I have this one and then I have one more that I picked up from Lowe's a few years ago and I've actually used this one primarily. This one was given to me, it's very old. This one works really well. It's a Corona and it's really heavy duty, but um, the blade is attached with screws down here and it gets a little wobbly. And last time I tried to edge with it, it was a bit difficult if the ground's hard. I just need to take the time to clean these screws, bolts and nuts off and tighten it down a little more and hopefully it will work a little better. But I'm gonna try and use the other one today because it seems to be working pretty well. So the first thing I do in these instances is I go all the way down with the edger first. So I'm gonna make my entire line, you might see down here it looks a little bumpy in areas. I'll straighten that up as I go along with the edger. And that's the initial pass. So after I make that pass, then I will come through and take the regular shovel, spade, whatever you wanna call it, and come down at like a 45 degree angle from the inside of the bed and scoop out all of that dirt, put it in my gorilla cart and dispose of it. And after that's done, then I will come in with the contractor's paper I mentioned I got from Lowe's um, and fill in any remaining portions of the bed that are grass. I may wait since the contractor paper is smaller until uh, right before I put mulch down this weekend. That's probably the best bet in what I will do because I don't want the contractor's paper blowing away. It will also rip much easier than this cardboard wheel. So that'll at least give me a nice clean edge going into mulching. And then when you mulch, you just bring the mulch all the way down to the lowest dip uh, in the fresh edge you've cut. So I'm gonna get started. So you just wanna wiggle your trenching or your edger back and forth to kind of prise the grass up a little bit as you're going along. That way it's easier to remove with the shovel when you come back through with the shovel. This process doesn't take as long as it seems it might. And you can listen to some good music while you're doing it. Just one thing to be aware of, if you're creating any beds in your front lawn or around any utilities, you might want to call um, your dig. It's like 811 in Ohio, I think, or something like that, uh, just to make sure you're not going to hit your cable line, for instance, because sometimes those are not buried in a pipe below the ground. Ours actually runs almost a couple inches under the soil. We found it when they were putting in the patio so you just want to make sure you're not going to be cutting any of those lines in two. We do have an invisible fence. Um, it's not used very much anymore but there's not any wires right here so I'm not worried about cutting anything so I'm just going to proceed through uh, like nothing's there. The ground down here is a little tougher because I do have the um, sprinklers set not to spray onto the shed so it's a little more difficult down here to get into the ground. If you have very rocky soil 
I'm not sure what to tell you. This may be a little difficult at times, but that was actually pretty smooth for me. Sometimes I will hit some pretty big rocks, which are difficult to remove. Um, so what I'm gonna start doing is coming through with the 45 degree shovel and scooping up the rest of this grass. I no longer need the hose, so I'm going to move it out of the way because I don't want it to get nicked. This is my Ely garden hose that I've raved about on my channel. The hoses don't have kink memory. They are a little more expensive, but they're the best hoses I have found on the market. You can just bend them and bend them and bend them and they go back and you'd never know that the hose was ever bent. And of course, I hit a rock. Spoke too soon, people, spoke too soon. This is by far the most difficult part of this process. It just takes a little longer. As long as you've got a nice clean edge, the grass usually comes up pretty easily, but it's still all the heavy lifting of removing this grass. If you had a nice square edge spade, it might actually work better. I've been on the hunt for one. If you know of a really good brand you like, I've seen some on Amazon. I'm just not committed to a brand yet. This one works good, but sometimes after you make the first pass, I have to come back through and make another pass to clean up the circular look um, if I'm not happy with it. So that's the only downside of using a standard shovel is it does create that half moon shape. Typically I pile enough mulch in my beds that you can't really tell anyway. So one thing I do to speed this along is I go all the way down first. So I'll go all the way down the line here and then I'll come back and I'll show you what I do. So the ground right here is really tough and if you run into that I just like to spray it with a little bit of water uh, and let it sit for a few minutes to soak up that water and then you can come right through typically and finish what you started. What I'm going to do since this is so tough is go back through and start removing some of this edging and then I'll come back down here and finish this area. So let's pretend I finished this whole area. You don't have to do it in this process. Do it how you like, but this is just the general way I work because it's kind of like an assembly line. You do one task, the next task, and the final task. I just come through and cut this like this and sizable pieces you can pick up. Remember, this is going to have a lot of soil on it. Can, it can get quite heavy depending on your soil type. I have clay, so I try to keep it in smaller sections that are easily manageable and picked up. And then after I've got all this cut down, it should just pull up kind of like sod would if you were removing sod. So after you've cut your slices, like I said, it's kind of like sod and you can simply remove it, pull up the pieces and dispose of them rather easily. So I'm gonna begin that process. So I don't know if you'll be able to see what I'm about to show you, but you might be able to. When you're using these round shovels, as I mentioned, sometimes there's little tufts of grass that stick out just because of the way the shovel went into the ground. So I'm gonna go back and clean up those. If you're using a square shovel, that may not be necessary, but that's just one thing I see that I like to clean up at the very end, and then I'll show you what the edges look like. So my yard is either full of clay or full of this stuff. And down there, I had specific trouble with the grass staying green throughout the summer, no matter how much water I would put on it. And this is probably why. And it's one of the reasons I put the shed where I did, since I was having so many issues, I was like, we'll just not grow grass on it. So everyone, I am what I'm gonna consider done for the night super sweaty it's still super hot out here um, and I'm gonna show you a close-up of what this looks like now the edging as I was going back and looking right here in front of me where it kind of meets this bed 
might be a little wonky. Um, can always be revised later. That's the great thing about natural edging versus putting in metal edging or stone edging or anything else. A little more difficult to remove with natural edging. You just dig out a little further and throw some mulch on top of it. That's all there is to it. So, but you can see the nice gradual curve I made here out into the side of the shed ramp. And so I'll be doing the same thing on this side to connect it to the maple, as I mentioned. But until that time, I'm thinking it looks pretty good. One of my favorite things is a nice clean edge in the garden. It bothers me so much when the grass is growing over it. Uh, and I need to actually straighten up all my edges everywhere else before the garden tour, which honestly, it's probably going to be later in August than I expected. It's already the 10th, um, and I am going to be trying to completely at least finish out this bed and finish that bed over there before I even consider doing a garden tour. So be patient with me. Everything's not looking particularly excellent anyway. July just happened and it was super hot. And so the plants are suffering a little bit and I'm trying to keep as much water on them as possible just to keep them looking good. So let me show you what this finishing touches on this edges look like. So just for a close up, I'll take you down here and you can see how nice and smooth that edge is right here compared to this line. Um, this is a little closer it looks in camera than it actually is. Sometimes you may want to do a little further angle. I just want to go down further enough that my bluegrass doesn't have any issues growing into the mulch. And typically this is enough to keep it trained well. Um, you may notice some browning on your grass in a few days. That's fine. It will grow up just to look perfectly fine and green like anything else. Uh, it's pretty natural, but you can see here. It's a nice gentle slope Looks like I need to straighten this up a little bit um, But I will just come in and lay mulch all the way down into the edge and that will be the next step So thank you guys for following along for part two I'm gonna consider part two edging the bed part three would typically be laying down the cardboard, but I got a jump start on that yesterday because I just wanted to get the cardboard out of the garage and it was a nice cool evening and that was the perfect time to do it. So I got all that done. So now all that's left is to come in and lay down the contractor's paper and then put mulch directly on top of it. And this will be prepared for planting in another month or so, hopefully. I've got an exciting shipment coming that's going to be going in this area I can't tell you about right now, but it'll be on a video coming up soon, hopefully. Uh, and I'm still just so excited and how this area is going to transform. This is the part of the year that I get very tired gardening. Uh, I'm just kind of tired of gardening, but seeing progress like this, which this has been a project I've been planning all summer and all spring, and seeing a project like this finally come together makes it all worth it. So there's still a lot to do. I've still got to do the maple bed over here, uh, but this was the bed I was most focused on getting completed first. Um, this bed over here, which I'll show you because I didn't show you like I mentioned I would, it's going to be the same thing. So in this area, I'm going to start the bed transition right here and come out this way to the fence line area. So I'll need to add a little more contractor paper up here on the front, but this will allow me to plant up this area next to the fence because it was going to be pretty much unusable grass space anyway and it would have been difficult to cut and just kind of a weird grass space that wasn't going to be used. So uh, now it can be a nice planting space. For those of you who may have been concerned with my oak leaf hydrangea, it is recovering a little bit. We've got some new growth popping out, so I think it was just stressed from the transplant and it'll be perfectly fine here before long. It'll recover and bloom out perfectly fine next year. Uh, right now, it just may look a little rough for the rest of the summer. You can see a better image of where the fence is going to go here. So I've got these stakes. Guys, I don't know if you've seen them this year, but Lowe's has fiberglass stakes now. Uh, previously, there were those very soft metal coated in plastic, and they bent super easily whenever I would stick them in the ground. These are a little more expensive. I think they're about $5 a piece, but they are solid. Um, so I was really excited to get a few of those just for multi-purpose around the garden uh, Drawing out spaces like this so you can see where The fence will go and why I will need to move those daylilies 
and that hydrangea there as the fence comes through. So that's about it guys. So thank you guys so much for joining me. I hope you enjoyed this video. I'm really excited about this space as I mentioned and I'm excited to see it coming together quicker than I expected. Still a lot of work to do but at least these parts are getting done so we can focus on planning for the flower bed later this fall. Thanks for joining me everyone. Remember like, subscribe, and comment below if you have any questions. And remember, in a world full of hate, be a light. See you guys soon. Bye.